All of us are leaders. All of us are captains of our own ship. And all of us are leading in some of the most difficult business times you know, that hopefully we'll ever see. And it's tough. And every once in a while, we need to take some time out of our busy lives and start up, stop obsessing over the things that we can't influence. You know, none of us get to pick and choose our store locations. None of us have any input as to what the economy's doing. And, but maybe we should think about the things that we can influence to make a difference and to create new opportunities. And when I took command of Benfold a couple years ago, it wasn't quite the worst ship in the Pacific Fleet, but we were probably third or fourth from the bottom. And I didn't get to pick and choose my missions. I had no input into how much budget we got. I didn't even get to pick and choose my shipmates. You know, they were assigned to me by the Navy. And I decided to, for the first time in my career to stop obsessing over things I can't influence anyway and maybe just focus on the one thing that I do have the ability to influence. And that's connecting with my crew and getting them to realize we're all in this together. You know, if this ship goes down, we're all going down regardless of what our rank is. So what I wanted to do, do something that I think we had lost our way of in the military, you know, treat our people with respect and dignity. You know, invest in their training and education and get them to realize, you know, we're all in this together. And what happened was they turned their own ship around, not me. They decided it was in their own best interest to do it. And for our efforts, we got featured in the Harvard Business Review and another business magazine. And the reader response was so overwhelming. I was asked to speak at a business conference in Naples. A thousand business leaders from around the country were coming to this two-day conference. And the problem was I had never spoken in public before. And I figured I was going to be a breakout speaker speaking to 30 or 40 of the thousand people in attendance. And I get to Naples and I looked at the program for the first time to discover that over the two-day conference, there would be just three keynote speakers. The first one was the guy who founded Visa. The second one was a guy by the name of Tom Peters, who gets paid $100,000 a speech and has a private jet to take him there. And the third keynote speaker was the schmuck from the US Navy, who paid his own way on Southwest Airlines to get there. And uh, I was so nervous, I got to sleep the night before. I get up after Tom Peters. I'm nervous. I'm intimidated. 20 seconds into my speech, a lady in the front row got up and made a very visible display of walking out on me. And sweat just started pouring off my face because I couldn't believe I'd be that lousy that soon that people were already leaving. But I stumbled through the rest of the speech, and I met this lady at O'Hare Airport four months later. And she came up to me and said, you may not remember me, but I was the lady who got up and walked out on you at your first speech. And I said to her, lady, I'm never going to forget you. <laughs> And she said, I need to tell you why I left. She says, I'm from Berkeley, California, and I hate the US military. And she said, I didn't think there was anything I could possibly learn from anybody in your line of work. So I was going to go do voicemails and emails. She said, but we, what you don't know is by the time I got to the exit, I realized I faced the same challenge that you face. That yeah, I can order my people around. I can order them to get a mission accomplished. But I can't order excellence. And the excellence only comes about when us leaders us captains of our own ship, you know, create and lead those engaged shipmates and get them to take as much ownership for the results as we have for it. She said, I turned around, took a seat in the back row, listened to your speech. To this day, seven years later, we become best friends. Every time I'm out in the Bay Area, I call her up, take her out to lunch, share ideas of things we can do better as leaders.